Okay, we are here on filmsgonewild.com uh, and we are going to talk about Una Great Movie. And it is Una Great Movie. We're going to talk to the director, writer, and dreamer, Jennifer Sharp, uh, because that, that's how the credits roll on, on this film. And she's also one of the stars of the film. I'm assuming did craft services and, uh, <laughs> and, and occasionally when she wasn't in a scene, held a boom mic or two, uh, was her own gaffer and grip. Um, because something tells me, Jennifer, that you did every damn thing that, uh, that, that someone could do on a film. Yes. Yeah. I did. I, I actually, I really did. Like, you got it. I don't know, like, how you, but you got it. Like, I really say, and this is not to, it is 100% truth. I think I'm probably about the top 5% of people in the world who know, like, every aspect of making a movie. Like, every aspect, you know, from the editing to the coloring to the sound mixing to the casting to the location scouting to the accounting, like, everything. <laughs> Marketing. Well, you know, and, and, I talk to a lot of filmmakers that, you know, that, that, that fall into that, you know, that, 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 that frankly are, you know, under that same umbrella with you. But in this case, this particular film also accents that. And, um, and one of the things I, uh, I remember a while, uh, and this is like several years back, I had a film that um, was a tough film to watch. Um, because it, it really kind of taxed you as a viewer. And as a publicist, I was like going, I don't know if I can throw my political weight behind this movie. Um, I don't have to sell it. And then the movie, a scene during the final credits, movie's over, final credits are rolling, and a scene that played during the final credits won me over for the entire movie. And then I, and I, and I was able to talk about it with, with uh, um, reviewers and critics in a different way, because I said, listen, First 45 minutes of the movie, you're really going to be irritated with me, but stick with it. And, and there's a reason for it and what have you. Now, that is not the situation with Una Great Movie. This, this is entertaining all the way through. It's not taxing, but someone who sticks through to the final credits and watches that also gets another onion peeled back yeah. and gets another insight into what you did and what this movie is. So... Now that I've done that big braggy intro for you. I love it. You're, you're bringing me to tears. <laughs> <laughs> well, for, for, for our audience that has not had the chance to see it yet, in your words, describe Una Great Movie for them. Okay, so my words, which is a little, a little, I don't know, you'll see. But what I like to say is basically, it's just a beautiful movie about a black woman traveling in Mexico that slowly transforms into an all white romantic comedy. <laughs> That's what I like to say. Now, some people say that's too vague, but I like it because it confuses you and you're like, what? But the movie is kind of confusing. So I think it kind of leaves you where you need to be. But to elaborate a little bit, it turns into an all-white romantic comedy because what the movie you're watching in Mexico actually turns out is a script written by a screenwriter in Hollywood who's trying to sell it. And as she's trying to sell it, the execs and producers tell her it won't sell. You don't have a celebrity. You need this, you need that. They change it to Hollywood style. And in real time, you watch her beautiful movie change to an all-white Hollywood film. Right, right, right. And and you know, and it's funny because I was until you added that point, I was like going, "Oh my God, there's so much more." There's just I know, so much more. <laughs> right? I know, yeah. yeah. And and you know, and um, if I had to reference a movie um, that that I think would would sell it in an instant for anyone like myself, uh, uh, Christopher Guest, The Big Picture. Oh. Um, it, you know, it, 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 you know it, what? I have got to watch that. You're like the tenth, twentieth person who said that. That was like uh, Kevin Bacon or something, or yeah, Kevin. Kevin yeah. Bacon started in the film. I'm watching it tonight. You you, you should because yeah. your film is a wonderful updating of that, and uh, and and has even grander ambitions. Um, it's hilarious. It is a it is a fucking funny movie. But but you bring in so many more shades of importance in terms of um, uh, inclusion and intersectionality and, 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 the, and the crap that frankly, you have to go through as a filmmaker that I don't have to go through as a filmmaker. <laughs> yeah. um, and, uh, and, and again, there, you know, I could talk to you for an hour about the film and, but I don't have that much time and, and um, I wanted to go into one thing really quickly. 
Uh, I remember in a Hollywood long ago and far away, um, I was about to have a, a film of mine made because I'm a filmmaker as well. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I'm in that process. The film is, is, is really already greenlit. And I go into the studio uh, to talk about it. And they had just brought on a new development person. Now, mind you, they've already told me they're already going to make my movie. And now the new development person now suddenly has notes. And they're going, but we're already making this movie. And they're going, well, yeah, but, but, you know, but this new guy, he wants to talk about stuff. And in this film, it was a thriller or what have you, and evil dad farmer um, guy um, versus two sons, what have you. And the note literally was, well, we have a problem here. We want to change the profession because farmers aren't bad. And, and I thought about that immediately watching <laughs> a scene in your film, you know, because it's that kind of insanity that a writer like yourself has to go through because you go, wait a minute, you are putting this thing on it and asking me to make an entirely different movie rather than just um, you know, making notes on the movie we're making. Exactly, exactly. And that's the thing. And that's why all these movies start to meld together and be so lame and like not exciting. Cause like, you're just not allowing an artist to be an artist. And you might disagree with, and I love, I love what you said about you have this movie where you told the press to like watch, just watch the 45 minutes, just watch it. Because so many people are so used to things in a box and specific things. And after 10 minutes, they get annoyed because of this, this, and this. And you have to understand that like, you have to, we have to learn how to be good audiences, not just good filmmakers, but and to be a good audience, like you have to sit there and be like, this filmmaker wanted to make this movie. And I'm going to sit here and enjoy the fact that this is the filmmaker, this is the movie that this artist wanted to make and accept what they give you instead of changing it to something that's acceptable to all of us. Cause it's like, everybody will give you things that are different. There are things that you won't like about the movie, but there are things you'll like and there are things and vice versa to other people. So, so important. Well, you know, and, and, and I've got other stuff I want to move on to, but I think one of the things that's really, really awesome and cool about the film is that you walk right up to the line of, 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 of frankly, possibly even annoying someone who isn't versed in the reality of what it takes to get a film made, what it takes to get someone to take your script seriously, what it takes, because you go, okay, another person has another opinion of the movie that right. totally contradicts the last one. And, but yes, yes, that, yes. that never stops, right? Exactly. It never exactly. stops. Yeah, and you know, it's funny. So the part where the movie turns into an all white romantic comedy, I actually shot the rom-com. Like it's like 25 minutes, maybe 30 minutes. There's a whole storyline and it's actually, and it's beautifully shot. It's the most beautifully shot part of the movie because it's supposed to look like Hollywood. And my first draft, I had like, you know, a good 20 minutes of the rom-com where suddenly the movie becomes this rom-com and you're following this other storyline. And the audience, the reactions I got is that they just got really annoyed, but they got mad at me because they're like, I don't care about this movie. You just took us out of the movie we cared about. And now we have to watch this movie we don't care about. And they were angry. They were angry and they're like, take it out, take it all out. And I'm like, if you're angry, then I did the right thing. Like, you should be angry. We're yeah. all angry. Why are we all watching these stupid movies all the time? Like, I'm angry that I go to Netflix now and I see stupid, stupid, stupid movies, you know? I mean, some good ones, but overall it's like this mass thing. And it's like, so I felt good as an artist that I made my audience angry because that's the point. You should be angry, except when they're angry at me as a filmmaker, that's not really good for the movie. So I had to cut it down. Well, you know, and that's why I say you walk up to the line yeah. And, yeah. And, 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 you know, and, and yes, you want to provoke your audience, you know, if you're not making lowest common denominator, uh, you know, entertainment. Yes. Um, right. Um, and, and, and then here's the, a, another thing that I really wanted to give you a chance to talk about because I thought it was awesome. And that's your casting in the film. Um, I'm old enough um, to remember when Woody Allen was praised and Julia Taylor, his casting director were praised for finding great faces for his films. And, and I thought about that a lot watching your film because there are so many great faces in the film that Aaron Spelling would have never cast in his TV shows. Yeah. And, and, and I think it grounds your movie in, in, in such a great way when you bring us back to 
a reality and, and, and what have you. So please talk about that. Okay, yeah. So specifically the Mexico portion, like I use 50 local Mexicans as actors. And I went to this town in Mexico that I shot at that I know very well and I know the people. And I basically was like, who wants to be in this movie? And who, and like of my friends and whoever wanted to be in the movie, I wrote a scene for them uh, around their personality type, something I knew they could do. And they're all just such amazing people. And they're so, and they're so different and I love it. So you have all these real Mexicans from Mexico, but they're all different shades of, of colors, you know? So you, we think of Mexicans in the US as like the specific indigenous, you know, but there's Mexicans who are white, there's Mexicans who are tall, who are short. And so, um, and that was just really exciting to me because when I go to the island, when I see the people on this island, they're not people we're used to seeing. So I'm really happy to like, I want to show different faces and I want us to see different things and different body types, you know? So, right. So like my love interest in the movie is like a, I don't know, 300 pound Mexican guy. <laughs> and he, but he's so awesome. Like he's so, he's so yeah. awesome. Yeah. Like, and, and, um, I literally though had people question that a lot. And I, somebody in one of the critiques said, really that uh really uh, the 200 pound shrek for jenny give me a break come on did you have somebody better like somebody actually said that and i was like the fact that she said that is exactly the reason why he's in this movie right. you know and um and and i think that we need to see different people as love interests like you can be fat and you can still be totally sexy or someone's you know potential love person but we don't see that you can be black you can be dark skin you can be light skin you can be so i really do that and I've been told it hurts me. Like it'll hurt me with distribution. It hurts me with distribution. Somebody told me like, I don't have like a beautiful specific lead lady and that's gonna make it really hard for me to get distribution. Well, you know, I'm glad you segued me in, in, into the last question I wanted to ask and talk to you about. And I'm not even say it's a question because it's just a topic that I wanna talk. And, and that is between yourself and our, our, our other two uh, female lead actors, um, uh there is such a wealth of of character and 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 and, and personality um and, and and you know and there are, uh, all three of you are also um you know i i would put you in in in, in i don't know i was just a fan Thank you. Yeah, we're, we're very different. Like, yeah, there's three black women that are all completely different. Yes, like, yes. And, and none and, of us really fall into a stereotype. No, but, and, yeah. and, and, and amazing. And, and here's the interesting thing. Um, when we start off and we think we just have one lead and we think it's all about her, um, I was already thinking she has a great face. You know, yeah. she, 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 she has a face that, that is, you know, that as a director, or as a DP, and and you and you know and you're like going. She has to express so much, um, and oftentimes without your own dialogue. Yeah. You know, and she's fantastic. But then we bring then we introduce our writer, and she also talk about seeing what's behind the eyes. Um, you know, again, and you know, and and bringing you in as a counterpoint uh, to it. I I want you to talk about the beginning because because you're the one who you're the architect of this. And you know, and 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 obviously have so much stake in this. Talk about literally your strategy there. Yeah. Well, I really it's so important to me, like as a black woman who's never seen myself in movies ever, um, that are rarely, you know, every now and then you're like, ah. But I wanted to show the the different, you know, I wanted to show the freedom and the freedom that Mexico brings you. So Jenny, like my character, was basically about the freedom that we can be free and that Mexico gives you. And, and then I wanted to show the two black women traveling in Mexico that you didn't see. And then my lead actress in Mexico is a large woman, you know, um, not large, whatever. She's just not your typical skinny, right. right? So, and her hair. So she asked me when I cast her, she's like, do you want me to do a weave? Or like, what are we gonna do with my hair? Cause I was bringing her to Mexico and like, we, went, we were gonna have a really a hairstylist and I was kind of her hairstylist. I was like, oh, we'll do some twists. And then she was like, or we could just leave it short like this. And like, and I was like, yeah, I was like, I don't want, like, I don't want fake hair, like just be natural. Like, and so her hair, and I actually had some critiques about her hair. Like some people have no, you know, like, oh, I would, you know, sometimes her hair, one person was like, I would never wear my hair like that in public, the way that lead actress wore her hair. And it's like, the thing is, if you're a black woman traveling in Mexico, if you're a black woman and you're planning on getting in the ocean, 
then you have to, your, your hair is gonna, not gonna look like it looks in movies. Like, and that's why black women don't swim half the time because like, we don't like what it does to our hair. Like it takes long enough to do it. So I was like, I'm gonna have black women swimming in this movie. Like you never see that happen. I mean, it's to have them get their hair wet. And so I loved it. Like her hair was like perfect for travel. And sometimes it just dried. And I just, I'd be like, well, let's just throw some twists on it. And it's, and it's, it's normal. And then the other, um, the Los Angeles woman, dark skin, like I really wanted, yeah, I love that she's really dark skin. Like she's a very dark skin black woman. And I wanted to make sure because, you know, I'm more light skin and I think Numa's like in the middle uh, or maybe we're the same. I don't know. It's hard. Sometimes it's hard to tell your own color, but she's Jonelle, the lead actress in Los Angeles is definitely very dark. And that was really important to me to have like a dark skinned woman. And there's actually a whole evolution that I don't think anybody has ever noticed. There's a lot of things you'll never notice unless you watch this movie like three times, but the evolution of her hair in LA is very specific. When she's talking to industry people, it's straight. And when she's with her friends and dreaming and being more herself, it's curly. And so is there, so there is thought like to everything, like there's thought to everything. <laughs> well, uh, there is thought to everything. You, that's, yeah, I couldn't, I, I, I couldn't have you end it better, uh, <laughs> you know, than, than, than with that statement. Uh, again, um, we've been talking with Jennifer Sharp about uh, Una Great Movie, who is, uh, which is uh, screening at the Lake County uh, uh, Film Festival. Uh, you know, Jennifer, um, again, as a fellow filmmaker um, and, you know, and knowing the barrage of crap that comes your way from very well-meaning people, um, you know, I think the film is awesome. And, you know, and, 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 and I think, an audience is sure to, to you know to you know to, to find it um you know and uh and i just congratulate you on it thank you so much that really means a lot i, I appreciate it thank you <laughs> okay and we are we're done you made it all right all right uh, uh listen you know I, I, again um